today we're talking about using Monarch to automate exception reporting for reconciliation. And as a specific example, we're looking at daily debit reconciliation to ensure that cardholder transactions are accurately entered in the bank's core system. To do this, we have data from multiple sources that needs to be made uniform and then compared. It's a match and kill, and we will see a number of challenges with this process that Monarch is able to surmount. The first challenge is going to be the shape of the data. As you see, this is how the bank receives the report from the card processor. It's a text file where every time a card swipes, there are at least four lines of data, sometimes more. This is unusable without some person manually copying and pasting or without significant scripting effort. However, when Monarch was first released in 1990, this is exactly what it was designed to do. For text or PDF files, Monarch uses pattern recognition to identify and extract the pertinent data and structure it into rows and columns. Of course, those patterns and everything that's done in Monarch are saved in a file as instructions for repeatability. The next challenge is the sheer volume of data. For this example, which came from a typical day at a mid-sized bank, the file we just parsed contains over 87,000 transactions, and the data from the bank's core contains over 48,000 transactions. When I said earlier that someone could manually copy and paste, I think that would be untenable at these numbers. For Monarch, this number could be two, three, or 10 times that amount. Before we move on, please note the text file on the left has nearly twice the number of transactions as what was entered onto the core, and that will take us to our next challenge. The fact that although every time a card is swiped, an entry is created, not every entry on this report will be logged in the core. In this example, we see the same card number, the same account number, and the same amount, except the middle transaction is negative. That is because both of these first two transactions represent a customer cancellation at the terminal, which will not be debited or credited to the account. Beyond reversed transactions, there are other situations where the transaction simply was not approved for a myriad of reasons. In this case, the response code indicates a stolen card. Monarch can handle these situations in a variety of ways. For purchase authorizations, a simple filter will do. For reverse transactions, we can tell Monarch to look for matches in key fields, card number, account number, and terminal identification. Then, we instruct Monarch to return the sum for matching transactions and again apply a filter to eliminate $0 amounts. The final challenge is the biggest. What was referred to on a previous slide as ambiguously matched data is, in this particular example, mismatched sequence numbers. Looking at this table, you will see a number of paired transactions which should be reconciled. There is one from each report. The card number is the same. The transaction type is the same. The amount is the same. The account number is the same. But the sequence number does not match. At banks where we have deployed this solution, this is the point where, prior to Monarch, a person had to get involved. Because of Monarch's flexibility as a general purpose data preparation solution, we were able to craft a workspace that takes these factors into account when needed and ignores them when not, producing a multi-phased process that executes automatically and repeatedly until it has identified only the true exceptions for the day, freeing the analyst for more productive work. To learn more about how easy it is to implement this solution, whether your core system and card processor are Fiserv or some other technology, or if you're willing to partner with us in developing a solution for this or any process at your institution, contact Altair today at altair.com slash knowledgeworks contact us.